So we're going to be reacting to Mehdi Hassan questioning the imam that endorsed Trump. So we're going to call him Trump's imam. The Republican presidential candidate is shamelessly attempting to seize on that Gaza anger and bring Muslim and Arab voters over into his court. And this past weekend, shockingly, he got a big win when a group of what's been described as Muslim community leaders in Michigan gave Trump a raving endorsement at his campaign rally in that swing state. Just take a listen. We just had a, a positive meeting with President Trump. We as Muslims Muslims stand with President Trump because he promises peace. He promises peace, not war. We are supporting Donald Trump because he promised to end war in the Middle East and Ukraine. The bloodshed has to stop all over the world. And I think this man can make that happen. I personally believe that God saved his life twice for a reason. In your endorsement speech for Donald Trump, you said that Trump, quote, promises peace, specifically in yes. the Middle East and Gaza. This is a man yes. who, when he was president, gave Israel whatever it wanted. He moved the embassy to Jerusalem. He legalized the illegal annexation of the Golan Heights. Since the genocide began in Gaza, he yes. said he would let Israel, quote, finish the job. He's told Netanyahu, quote, do what you have to do. His son-in-law, Jared mm -hmm. Kushner, has said that Israel should expel Palestinians into the desert. So I do believe mm -hmm. it is madness to say that Donald Trump promises peace when he doesn't promise peace. It was a reference to your specific claim. But you can tell us why yeah. you think. That's why I've invited you on the show. You tell us why you think Donald Trump is promising peace in the Middle East when he's saying otherwise. Mahdi, let me start by saying that what you saw on stage wasn't the beginning. The, the, the moment was the result of uh, meetings and serious discussions we had earlier that day where we came to an agreement on key points. Briefly tell us what were the five points. Number one, to end the war in the Middle East, especially in Gaza, and also to end the war in the Ukraine. That's number one. Okay. And we think this is crucial. This is very important. And because we as Muslims, I went as an imam and we approached him as an imam. And we think that, you know, the religion of Islam is all about peace. And this is what yes. I said in the video. So, so we got number video. one. We, I'm just going to hurry okay. you along because we won't have time to do an interview. Just tell us what two, yeah. three, four, yeah. five are. Okay. Number two is that he promised or actually we demanded that, you know, that he will protect, the, you know, the family values, especially when it comes to curriculums and school, which he made that clearly in his speeches and also in his okay. meeting, you know, the meetings that he has privately or publicly and also number three that he will include muslims he will be inclusive and he will include muslims in his cabinet he will include muslims in his administration that's number three number four is that he will tackle he will fight islamophobia and number five we mentioned things that we agree with the rest of the american people you know to have a strong economy and to okay. have also strong borders so, so you made and the point so, so, so everyone's heard those are the points they're very admirable points to put forward but let's just deal Thank with you. the substance of the biggest one the war how can you mm -hmm. say he's a peace candidate or believe he wants peace when he has mm -hmm. not called for a ceasefire he has not called for restrictions on arms sales he said the exact opposite he says netanyahu should be killing more people with less restrictions let's have a listen to what trump says publicly not what he promises you privately have a listen to what donald trump said the other day can we play the clip he's doing a good job biden is trying to hold him back he probably should be doing the opposite actually I'm glad that BB decided to do what he had to do. So Trump is saying that after 42,000 deaths in Gaza, 16,000 kids killed, Biden has held Netanyahu back and he shouldn't have held him back, that he's encouraging Netanyahu not to listen to any restraining words from Biden and that he's praising Netanyahu for what he did. And this is the man you're endorsing as the peace candidate? I don't get it. One of the signs of the hour is that people who will be in power will be liars and they will be believed. A truthful person will not be believed and a liar will be believed. So to me, it's like seeing that, you know? And another thing is that the Prophet Sallam said that a time will come where all nations will come together. And it just shows how weak we've become that we would even believe someone like Trump, who's a compulsive liar, you know, he's just lying continuously. So, I mean, what else can you say to that? You know, this, yeah. what else can you say? It's, I think it's a very good lesson for us as well. Uh, yeah. Of course, we're supposed to, you know, love our leadership yeah. and respect them. However, it also goes to show that just because you're an imam it doesn't mean that you're infallible yeah and it's very important that we're cautious with who we take knowledge from and not just because oh mm. he's got a beard or oh, found him in the mosque or she wears a hijab mm. oh you know they say inshallah and mashallah therefore you know i can marry them or therefore mm. i should follow them or mm. therefore you know i can blindly just mm. go behind what they're saying i mean not for average people yeah. yes if someone's passed away and uh, you know their life is clearly in front mm of you mm. then of course follow away however if someone is alive and you're not paying attention most of your time is spent at work and you come and you know mm. this this is an example mm -hmm. exactly this is what rudy giuliani trump's very good friend and lawyer said okay. the day after this is the day after you endorsed him you endorsed okay. him on saturday let's listen to what giuliani okay. said on sunday can we play the clip hamas is not there for us iran is not
not there for us. They want to kill us. And the Palestinians are taught to kill us at two years old. They won't let a Palestinian in Jordan. They won't let a Palestinian in Egypt. And Harris wants to bring them to you. So the day after you endorse him, at his own rally, one of his closest allies is making racist remarks about Palestinians, saying we shouldn't let them in. They're all terrorists. They're taught to hate it too. Okay. Do you so, not feel so, a little so, bit conned? Please, can you at least give me a chance to, to respond to your questions? Okay, what I'm saying is this. Is Trump responsible for each and every statement that is made by anyone that endorses him? So is he now responsible for everything that I say? If I say something now, controversial, for He, he is responsible is for what's said at a rally of his. Yes, he is. This was the most cringiest clip that's come out in recent times. Yeah. This guy is a real piece of work. A wrinkly piece of crap, frankly. <laughs> and he's coming out with two-year-olds. Two-year-olds can barely string a sentence together. How are they going to decide who they they like or hate. They even hate their own parents who don't give them their chocolate milk. You're saying that they're hating Israel or they're hating Jews and this is what a load of BS. Bro, we know what he's about. My issue is not about them. I know what they're about. The people that do not like Islam, enemy to Islam. I'm not surprised about them. My concern is this Imam, bro. This Imam there. Like, are you this gullible? Like, really? Like, two days later after this thing, one of Trump's guys saying this. You cannot make this stuff up. I just, I'm genuinely like, have we become so inferior that we are going to people like Trump? Bro, it's second-hand embarrassment, bro. A second-hand embarrassment to even be sitting there. And the most <laughs> funny thing is that you actually believe Trump is going to do that. Like, that's unbelievable. I'm not questioning okay. your good faith or good intentions in going to him to try and get something good for the community. I'm questioning why you believe him when he says this stuff to you in private, given it's not speculation, Imam. He says Joe Biden's a Palestinian. Chuck Schumer is a Palestinian. His lawyer says Palestinians are terrorists. Trump says Netanyahu's doing a great job. So, with respect, he is openly supporting the genocide in Gaza okay. while so, you're so, saying so he's the, the peace candidate. That we have, the other option that we have, now we're talking about words versus his actions whatever you mentioned is about and i don't agree with the statements that you just mentioned but and, the, and the other side listen the other side there's actions you're talking about the other side that i think that you're insinuating that we should be in the other camp and the no, other i'm camp, not saying that at all in fact actions. in fact i know a lot of muslims i know a lot of muslims in in michigan where you are who are going to stay at home they're going to vote for jill stein i get that what i don't get so, is why so, you would so, believe so, 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 why you would believe donald trump who says palestinians he treats them like terrorists talks about them Majoritively, okay. he supports okay. Netanyahu, and you keep saying it's speculation. It's not, I'm Imam. Not, the re not the not entire not Republican not Party. Can I finish a sentence? The entire Republican yeah. Party has voted to send weapons to Netanyahu. They have said Democrats are too soft on Palestine. They want to be more pro-Israel, more pro-genocide. In fact, Imam, you know that Netanyahu's own ministers, like Itmar Ben Gavir, say they want Trump. So you want Trump and they want Trump. So do we, both of us, do we want Trump for the same reason? I Is think that, that what you're saying? I think that he wants because, him for a reason. I think Maggie, he wants okay, him for a reason. Well, I'm answering your sentence. question. You Maggie, question. Yeah. Please, you already, you've done a damage on me and also on my colleagues, the imams and, and those who support us when you said this is madness and you reposted people that attacked us personally. And now, and to be honest with you, I'm shocked that you did not even see why did we endorse him? I, I, I understand why you endorsed him. You, he made you promises and I'm questioning why you believe him. You say, for example, Okay. You say, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. I've got to be okay. able to ask because a question. I've got to be able to ask a question. Party. With respect to mom, you said the five points, I let you read out the five points. One of the points was Islamophobia. I think you said one of the points was to fight Islamophobia. Yes. Donald Trump is yes. the most Islamophobic politician I've ever come across in my life. He literally okay. said, Islam hates us. He incited okay. hatred against Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, the only two Muslim women in Congress. They have to have 24 seven bodyguards because of what Donald Trump said about them. In what world do you believe he is anti-Islamophobia? He is the greatest purveyor okay. of Islamophobia. Okay. Listen, when it comes to politics, you know, politics is to get what is possible, you know, to build interest, to have something in common. So he called us, by the way, he invited us over to sit with him and to talk with him and to have a discussion. And he listened to us attentively and we gave him these points and he agreed to them. Now we have two options. Listen, maybe your idea is both options are not good, but I'm telling you, there's two options. One option is inviting us. One option is listening to us, is giving us, you know, extending his hand to us and he's listening to our concerns and also our aspirations. The other party, they're not listening to us. And, and let me let me, let's, I, let me say I, something. Imam, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with the Democrats are not listening. 100% I agree. Can we agree? We listening. agree the they're Democrats are not listening. But that Muslims doesn't mean that he's party. listening to you. Why do you 
not think he's just exploiting you for votes? He's using you, is he not? Why do you not see that? Are you not being a little naive with the greatest respect? Politics is all about interest, all about common interest. You give me something, I give you something. We give him endorsements. Because he's not going to stop being an Islamophobe because you vote for him, I can assure you. How do you know that? Do you know the, the unseen? You know now the uh, alim of Ghaib or something? Come on, man. What's that got to do with the unseen? Brother, it's simple. Yani, there's so, simple things you observe, bro. It's not a matter. It's not. You don't need to be a smart ass like you know. Oh, you know what? Yes, the unseen. I've got some sixth sense. Brother, it's in front of you. Do you not see what? He it has is? hope that Trump would <laughs> would do <laughs> good. Bro, you can't make this he has up. hope. Wallahi, lastly, lastly, you lack like hope, Ali. Ah, oh, bro. You said earlier that I'm engaging in speculation. You just said kind of alim al an unseen world. It's yeah. not speculation. Yeah. We saw what he did in uh -huh. office. When he was in office, he didn't just support the oppression of the Palestinians. He supported the Saudi-led war in Yemen, which I believe is a country you're from. He oversaw uh -huh. its deadliest, most violent. It started under Obama, but he oversaw its deadliest, most violent year, 2018. Tens of thousands of innocent Yemen were killed. Uh, a school bus in Yemen famously was blown up, 40 children killed by a US-made bomb. Less than a year later, Congress tried to stop the war. Trump refused. He bypassed Congress. He gave Saudi Arabia and MBS more weapons to kill Yemenis with. You are a Yemeni American. How do you vote for yes. someone who has so much Yemeni blood on his hands? You know, you know Mahdi, with all the, the respect, I think that you, you know, and I've watched your shows over and over. I think you think that Yemen is only Houthis. You have a problem, I didn't my friend. say a word about the Houthis. Listen, I said he blew up a bus finish. of children. Can I finish? I'm, listen, well, please don't put I'm words in my mouth. I didn't him. mention the Houthis. I said listen, he supported I'm the not, war in I'm Yemen. Not defending him. Mahdi, Mahdi, come on, man. If you think that anyone who endorses anyone that means he agrees with everything that he did and everything that he will that, that he will with do respect, in the future. that's not Come what on, i man. said i did not say you agree with everything he said we you said peace candidate listen, i'm Mahdi, only going on your words imam you said he's a peace candidate Can i'm I saying he oversaw the war in yemen your country you're not, of origin you're not allowing me. you already made your point on x that we we please, are people please speak, but don't put words in my mouth i won't put words in yours okay. i didn't mention who these okay. no but you say no but this is what what's happening even you said one time i think you said one time that it, you know when, if, if trump uh, you know uh, wins in the presidency this is what's going to happen also in Yemen. I'm telling you, 90% of the Yemeni people, they're not with the Houthis. I don't know what's your view on Houthis and all of that, but they're not with them. So you, for example, with respect, when Yemen Trump was president, I'm not talking about the Houthis. I didn't you. invite you to have a debate about Houthis. Under Trump, okay, do you deny no, that no, there was a massive humanitarian you said crisis Yemeni. in Yemen? You said you are a Yemeni. Yes, no, no, and I'm not, exactly, Yemen. I'm not dividing you into Sunni, Shia, Houthi, non-Houthi. I'm saying no, Yemen no. suffered massively under Trump and MBS. Okay. So please do not tell okay. me that this is hypothetical. I watched Trump as president okay. send weapons to a horrible war in which children yes. died at record rates. You yes. call him the peace yes. candidate. How? In the Muslim countries, including Yemen, they were living in bliss in the time of Obama. and, and I now never said that. This, this is all straw, man. No, I'm asking I'm about Trump. That. I'm not asking I'm you to endorse Obama. You endorsed no, Trump no, as the peace candidate. I invited you here options. to explain to me how he's the peace candidate. On Palestine, you say you trust him, even okay. though there's no evidence he supports peace in Palestine. And on okay. Yemen, you're now saying it's all the fault of the Houthis. Trump didn't do anything wrong sending weapons to kill kids. Wallahi, wallahi, I do. On my brain, I'm just genuinely thinking, is this, is, is this comedy? Is this comedy? I genuinely thought when the first thing happened, yeah. it's like some just random guy. He's not even a Muslim. It's just a random guy. He's an actual imam. I mean, I don't want to go into backbite. I'm just saying, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. And right, so mad. He could be the guy who changes up. Donald Trump, and you don't bro, even realize bro, he it. He thinks because we he's, sat with him. I think goes, he's fixed Donald Trump. Bro, bro. He, he thinks he's fixed him. He then. thinks that. Yeah, yeah. That's the most naive part. He goes, How do you know that he's, after he's spoken to us, he's going to be okay with the Muslims again? Brother, what do you offer him, bro? What do you think he cares about you? He kills your people. You're Yemeni. You're Yemeni, bro. And, and Mehdi Hassan rightly so just explained to you. He's the one who was funding the MBS and what was going on in Yemen. And now you're here. I, you can't make this stuff up, bro. Like I, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm speechless. I don't know what to say about it.